Hello everyone and welcome to Ask 3D Fluff a question. Today's question is, how do I add feathers to an object? Well, first of all, you will need the hair feature for that, which is part of Cinema Studio Package. So let's start by making a sphere. Set its basic color to white. Now go to Simulation. Hair object, add hair. Go to simulation again and hair object and feathers object. This new material here, the leftmost one, that's for the feather um, and I'll get back to it later. Now drag the hair object into the feathers object. This is a bit like using a spline in a NURBS object. The guides are used as the stalks for the feather. Now go to the guides page on the hair object and let's turn this down so that we can see only a handful of uh, feathers. And they don't really look like feathers yet. And if you click render, it still pretty much looks like hair. That's because Cinema still creates fill hairs between the hair guides. But feathers are only created per hair guide. So we need to turn off these fill hairs. So go to the hairs page and set the root option to as guides. And that gets rid of all the uh, fill hairs. I'm going to turn on the render region. Then I won't have to click uh, render manually all the time. And I'll turn up the quality with this triangle. Now let's go to the feathers object and to the shape page. Now using these uh, upper two graphs here, you can literally define the shape of the feather. And actually this works better without the interactive render region for now. Let's zoom in closer to one of the feathers so we can see this more clearly. If you unfold one of these graphs, you can use the tension slider to make it a more soft curve, like a B-spline, where the graph does not actually go through the points, but instead makes a nice soft shape. Now we have a nice round feather. And these little graphs here, they define the cross-section uh, curvature of the feather. Because you don't want the feather to just be flat, of course. This makes the lighting on the feather more interesting if you give it a more interesting cross-section. And these bottom two graphs here can make the hairs tilt upwards towards the tip of the feather. So actually these uh, graphs on the shape page aren't as uh, tricky to use as it first appears. It's uh, pretty obvious. Now let's go to the object page because the feathers are a little bit too perfect for now. You can add some imperfections to make them look more interesting. And to do that, you can give them some gaps. First of all, you need to make sure that there are gaps by uh, turning up the occurrence. And using a gap input field, you can make it a big gap or a small gap. And you can vary it as well with the variation. And notice how the Gaps in the editor don't really uh, correspond to the ones in the renderer, so here it's a good idea to indeed use the interactive render region. Let's now look at the feather material. What I'd like to do with this feather is uh, give it a, a white tip and change it to a more interesting color instead of brown. 
And let's just leave all these color settings alone and instead load a texture or rather a gradient shader here on the color page. And change this first color handle to blue. Well, any color you like really, but I like blue. And the right hand color handle should be white. Now it seems pretty tricky to actually make the feather have a white tip. Even if I change the type of the gradient to 2 dv, the gradient goes the wrong way. It goes sideways instead of uh, along the feather. And this uh, is probably a bit of a hidden uh, option. Click the feather tag here in the object manager. And in here you'll find a hair UV uh, option. Change this to feather. Now the gradient goes in a more useful direction along the feather. Now all you have to do is um, move the white color handle a bit more to the right and the blue one as well. And now we have a white tip. Okay, so go back to the hair object and on the guide page, turn the guide count as high as it'll go. Now we got a ball full of feathers. Of course, they look a bit uniform. So let's go to simulation, hair tools, brush. And let's brush some of these uh, down. It's probably best if you turn off the render region. And now it's important that you leave the brush tool. Uh, for example, you could click on move tool and press play. And this is how easy it is to animate hair or feathers in cinema. But these feathers also behave more like hair and not like feathers. They should be a lot more stiff. But there's a really simple solution to that, luckily. Click on the hair object. Go to the dynamics page and turn on the rigid option. Now if you press play again, the feathers are a lot more stiff. And you can wobble the sphere around a bit. That's how easy it is. Basically, Cinema has two uh, methods to calculate dynamics for hairs. The normal one and the rigid one, and the rigid one is perfect here. Let's uh, click render. This doesn't really look like much with the default lighting, so I'm going to fix that quickly. I'm turning the render region back on. Now let's add a light source and move it uh, up and left and a bit from the front. Turn on shadows. Soft shadows are great with hair. Really nice and fast. And look good. And to give you some color, let's add a second light source and move it towards the bottom right. I'm going to make it pink. Okay, maybe a little less pink. But still pink. I like color. And here we go. An object full of feathers, ready to be animated. And by the way, in case you're wondering why the hair strands uh, are out of sync with the feathers in the viewport here and in the render region. That's just a small limitation and if you click the final render button or render to the picture viewer, they are perfectly synchronized, so don't worry about that. Now if you have problems with the hair flickering um, or looking a bit pixelated in your final render and uh, animation, you might have to turn up the hair anti-aliasing and that's separate from cinema's anti-aliasing. Let's go to the render settings. And in here you find the hair render settings. These settings were added automatically as soon as we added hair to the project. Anyway, on this page you'll find the AA quality drop down. Simply change this to best. And that fixes any anti lysing problems you might have. By the way, if you don't think your feathers are dense enough yet, if you want more feathers on your object, 
You can change the hair guide root placement to uh, a different type, like polygon area. Then you can add as many feathers to your object as you want by simply turning up the number of hair guides. And that's it for today. I'm Janine Parker of 3D Fluff. For more tutorial downloads and training DVDs for Cinema 4D, you can visit us at 3dfluff.com. If you have something that you'd like to ask 3D Fluff about Cinema 4D, you can submit your question to ask at 3dfluff.com. Until next time, bye bye.